Alright guys, so OBS decided that I wasn't going to record my audio, so I'm going to speed through this as fast as I possibly can so I don't waste any more damn time. Okay, so the last time I left you, um, if I remember correctly, I showed you how to do doors and saves. So today what I'm going to show you how to do is um, set up a health bar or uh, a health meter or whatever the hell. Um, how to get hit by enemies so they can take damage or you can take damage. I'm going to show you how to get locked into a door or a room that way you can halt progression and I'm also going to show you how to uh, limit your health bar so it, does, it never goes over the um, amount of 100 as well as do knockback for the enemies alright that being said let's get started okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to go into player inventory and I want to add a brand new variable that's going to be max health all that's going to be is how, how high we want our health to be. Then we're going to inventory, we're going to add a new health variable, and we're going to set this to 100. Okay, and that's all we need to do for that. Give me a second here. I don't remember how I structured this crap because I'm just very irritated right now. Okay, now that that's done, let's go into our item upgrade, and we're going to change a couple of things here. Um, I know in the last video, or the last thing, time I did the uh, items, I had you pick, um, use a pickup type for like uh, an int or whatever. Yeah, it's actually just easier if you have a boolean. So let's just do that. I'm going to change these pickups to an upgrade. That should solve that. And then make sure that this, it does this. And now, with that being said, let's get to... Yeah, one more thing. Um, now that we change that, you got to make sure that if it's an upgrade, it's clicked. Um, but this all this is going to tell Godot is um, if it's an upgrade or not. So if it's an upgrade, click on it. If it's not, leave it empty. And item upgrade here. This is also an item upgrade. Beautiful. And the item ID shouldn't matter too much. Um, I think. You know, it actually does matter. That tells. Um, yeah. Okay. It tells your item tracker if it's been collected or not. Okay, now that's done, let's go into our player script. And what we're going to do... Um, oh no, we don't want to go into our player script. We want to stay in our item script. And we're going to just add a brand new, um, new condition. So what we're going to do is if get item type is equal to negative 2... Um, this is the ID, remember. If if player inventory dot get item, this is gonna be health, is less than or equal to its max health, then we just want to add it to our health. If if the player's health is greater than our max health, all we want to do is set it to be equal to its max health. That is it. Okay. And that is all that we want to do in here. So I'm just gonna quickly just let you see this. That way you can copy it. Okay. Now that that's done, I need to add a health item to the world. So all I'm going to do here is go to world, I'm going to do item upgrade. We're going to put this item health right here. And then all I want to do is change a couple of things. So let's go bullets. I want it to be the bullet icon or bullet, um, the bullets right Jesus Christ I'm gonna set this to negative two because that's what I told it to in the code here so now it knows that it's health and then it's not gonna be an upgrade and I would just want this to give me 50 so every time I grab this I should get 50 points um, now that that's done we're gonna to go to our HUD here and we're just gonna add two things we're gonna add a rich tech a rich text label you see right there click on that and I just named it health and then we're gonna have another label and we're going to add that, and we're going to have it equal to zero. Then in the script, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the health variable, make sure it says health, and then we're going to grab the current health label here, and then we're going to change that text to a string of whatever the health is. Because remember, um, these labels only only can only use strings. They can't use integers or, or floats or anything like that, so you have to convert them. Okay, so with that being said, if I play this right now... Beautiful. You can see my health is, is shown. Let's see here. Beautiful. 
health is shown and the item still works all right beautiful so what i want to do next is add an enemy to world two so i've already gone ahead and done that so all it is is an area a sprite and a collision shape the enemy isn't going to have any ai at all it's just going to sit there um and then when it when we run into it it should hit us so all i'm going to do is do an export variable of damage and we, we want damage to be looking for an int and then here in the physics process we want to check every single frame and see if um, it's colliding with any bodies so what we're doing here is creating a variable called check bodies and get overlapping bodies and all that is is a function uh, that's inherited from area 2d as you can see here just looking at the uh, um, documentation all you have to do is hit hold uh, hold control and then uh, left click and then it'll bring it up as you can see right here see it has overlapping bodies has overlapping areas. Now the reason why we're doing uh, overlapping bodies is because remember the player is a body, so we want to be looking for that. So anyway, for x in check body, so all I'm saying is the variable x is going through the overlapping bodies and it's looking for if any of them is in a group called player. And if it is, we want it to get a method called get damage, and we want that damage to be equal to the damage amount. So I won't, that damage amount is going to be whatever we set it during run runtime. So Currently, the player doesn't have um, a get damage function, so we're going to add it, which I have already done in the previous recording that was completely botched. Thanks, OBS. Anyway, so all that that's going to do is uh, in the player script, we're going to create a brand new function called get damage, and we're going to have a parameter called um, amount. Um, don't ignore this for now. Um, and then once that happens, we want the player to lose its health. Now, as you can see here, I have a timer, and I'm going to show you um, what that's for in a second here. Um, so all we want to do is once the, the get damage is called, we want to lose health of whatever the amount is. In this particular case, we are going to go to enemy. Oh, we haven't added it to the world yet, so let's do that. I'm going to add it to the world. Enemy. I want you to be right here. And then the amount I want this thing to do is 10. So every time we run into it, it should do 10 damage. Let's, let's get that. So um, let's create a timer, which has already been created because, again, previous recording, that got botched. Um, you're going to create a variable called timer starter is equal to false. And then you're going to have a timer, uh, a variable called timer count. And this is going to keep track of the time. Now, you could use a... Um, a timer node but this is just easier for me so all this is going to check is if the timer has been started or excuse me if the timer has not been started then it can take away health all this is doing is in most games when you get hit you have a moment of in, in, of invincibility and that's all that's it's allowing us to do that way the player has time to react because if we didn't have this the player would lose health almost instantaneous so I'm going to just quickly show you that. As you can see here, if I run into this, oh, that's right, I still have the knockback. Give me one second, let me get rid of the knockback. Here. So now if I run into this enemy, watch how quickly my health goes. Uh, look, at I couldn't even make it past this enemy before it drained all my health. So that's what that's for. So we're gonna have this timer here, saying if the timer is not started, um, meaning we haven't been hit yet, then take away health. And then we want the timer to get started to equal to true. Then we're going to create a brand new function called check health. And this is going to check and see if we ever hit zero or if we are less than zero. And if we've hit less than zero, we want a game over. Now you can do whatever you want here. You can cue the player free or do some type of animation, whatever it is that you want. Um, in this particular case, all I said is uh, print game over. And then I want the health to be clamped. And all this is going to do is make sure that the player's health um, never goes below zero. And it also never exceeds its maximum its maximum value. That's all that clamp is doing. And then down here, uh, I have a timer resetter. And this timer resetter is going to be called in the physics processor. You can see right here. That's where I put it. So this is being called every single frame. And all this is going to say is if the timer has been started, start the countdown um, plus equals one. So every frame um, when the timer is when the timer is on, add one. 
And if the timer ever is ever reach 50 or if it's greater than 50, I want you to turn off the timer and then reset the timer to zero. Okay, and what that does is it allows me to go here, as you can see here, I can now walk through the enemy and it's just slowly taking away my health. And if I come over here and I grab this item, uh-oh, what happened here? Dependent of array. If player max health, I must have not added this properly. Give me one second here. 50, item I2. Dependent on an array? Huh? In what world? It says here, if player dot inventory get item, which is health. Oh, make sure those are spelled correctly. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, beautiful. I always got to make sure things are spelled correctly. Um, let me just have this thing take up some of my health, and now I can come back over here and replenish my health. Boom, back to 100. And as you can see, it works because um, I never go over 100. Okay. Now let's do the knockback. Knockback is super simple. So I'm going back to the player script here. I'm going to knockback. And all this is saying is it's going to check what our direction is. And then it's going to knock us in the opposite direction of that. So if our current direction is equal to left, then I want us to be knocked back to the right. Uh, right and up and if my direction is right I want us to be knocked back to the left and up and then let's unhook this and now as you can see here with that done I can go over here and boom it instantly knocks me back now I can always add like a more invincibility for example it might be my collision shape or uh, the body is disabled for a set amount of time that way I can't just constantly run into to it like this so I get hit and I can run right through it but I'll leave that up to you if you want to do something like that okay all that is now done yay what am I doing on time probably the fastest video I've ever produced we are at 12 minutes Jesus Christ all right next up let's do the damn doors okay so I switched out the sprites here and added some more all I did was I colored these doors a different color. So uh, before our old sprite sheet was just the blue door and then it being open. I doubled it and then I changed this door space, space to be red. Um, because of that, it now has more frames. So you have to account for that. And all you're gonna do is go into the sprite sheet here and hit how many frames you have. In this particular case, I have four. So that's what I have here. So now we'll go back to the script. First thing I want to do is have an export variable. I want to know if this door is red. And if this door is red, I want I want this um, I want this um, frame to be set to two. Remember, this is this is it goes it starts at zero. So this frame uh, this picture here is a zero. This frame here is a one. This is a two, and this is a three. So all I'm saying is, if the door is red, set it to the red frame. Okay, after that, I need to make sure that it registers if the door is red or not with the bullet. If the door is red, then I don't want, if the door is, is not red, then I want the door to be able to be open with a regular bullet. But if it is, if it is red, and it's not open, then I want it to be open with a missile. And then I want, if it's if it's ever open with the missile, I want it to set to frame three, which is the open door here. Now I could set this to uh, frame one, same difference, but um, you know, I didn't think about that until now. Ha! -ha. All right, and then it's going to do the exact same stuff. It's going to cue that the door is open, and then it's going to make sure that the uh, the block that's keeping us from from progressing gets queued out. Now there's one thing I need to do, and that is I need to add the missile to a group. So we're going to go all the way down to here. Go to missiles, fire missiles, and what we're going to do is once we have instantiated the missiles, we want to get missiles and then we want to add them to the groups, and that group is going to be missiles underscore group. 
and um, what's happening is once we fire the missile it automatically once it enters the scene is going to be added to the missile group and with that being said if I did this correctly I should be able to to touch this door be able to click on it and see where it says is red door I'm going to click on so it's true it is red and now if I do this Beautiful. As you can see here, I can't get out. Now, I did forget to do one thing. Um, we want to make sure that our players have a way out. So if they do something dumb and um, they, you know, lose all their missiles, for example, like this, um, they're now trapped in here forever. <laughs> so we want to make sure that they always have a way out. So I'm just going to add another standard pickup. I mean, they can still lock themselves in here. Um, because I don't have it to, able to respawn. Whoops, wrong one. I don't have the ability for it to respawn after so much time. But you can, in theory, do that. So I'm just going to add this right here. Um, we're going to make this item ID negative one. It's not an upgrade type. And then I need this to be the regular missile so they know. Boom. Okay, and now we should yeah beautiful and now I should always have that missile there yep okay beautiful 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 okay um, I think I'm gonna end it there I've already spent way more time on this than I care to um, next time what I'm gonna do is maybe show enemy AI um, how to get that started or I might have us refactor our code or refactor our code however that said make this code cleaner um, currently the player script has like well over 400 lines of code in just a script alone we want to make that smaller so if you look over here in the uh, other script or the other game that I was working on here for the lesson ahead of time the player is a lot less code in here and that's because what I did was I added another script that handled all the player's animations instead. So we can do something like that next time. We'll see. I'll see what I decide. Um, I might honestly save that for the end and just do the simple enemy AI. <sighs> okay. I think that's everything. I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope you guys can keep up. If anything, just slow down the video because I'm not doing this again. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Farewell, my children.